Hello everyone, it's episode 251 of Aussie Tech Heads. We're back. We're back after a week of hiatus and, and colds and flu and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm all better. So thanks for persisting with us on our off week, but we're back. And we're back in a new lineup tonight. For this week only, we're back. Uh, tonight we have Steve and we all know Frosty. Hey Steve. Hey, how you going? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. And hello Frosty. Hello. Still cold down there in Tasmania? Yeah, it still is. Yeah. That's <laughs> well that's twelve degrees today. You still look cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah, twelve degrees, that's no good. All right. So, um, mm. Steve, what's been going on in your part of the world? Steve comes from the Gold Coast somewhere. And um, Yeah, I'm up um I'm up on the Gold Coast with you, mate. Yes, so not not too far not away. Much, yeah, not much happening for me this week other than work and trying to get over this bloody flu. Um, just work, work, work at the moment. Yeah, it's no good. So you've had the bit of the flu as well. Yeah, mate. I've had it for about two weeks. Oh, so. that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm I'm still a bit still a bit dodgy, but um, nothing like I was last week. I tell you, just didn't feel like doing mm. anything. That's, that's crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. But uh, you're up you up in the mountains somewhere, aren't you? Tambourine Mountain. Yeah, just sort of the western sort of hinterland of the Gold Coast. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. What, what can you see from up there? Can you see surface? You can see everything. You can see everything, <laughs> mate. You can see surface. You can see Brisbane. Oh yeah, nice, see, nice. See pretty far. Ah, that's good. Yeah. That's that's good. I like it. It's um out of the way, out of the rat race, but still close enough to to get places I need to go. So. Yeah. Look to to tell you the honest truth, I don't know if I've ever been to Mount Tambourine. Maybe once, which is a bit, bit of a bit of a um. A shame, isn't it, really? Because I believe it's really nice up there. Nice wine, apparently. Very nice. Very nice um, limoncello as well. Oh, nice. I'll have to get, so I'll have to get myself have to up there. You'll come up one day. I will. Yeah. I will. Uh, all right. So what else have we got going on tonight? We're gonna, we've got some news and we've got some views and we've got some emails and whatever. So uh, preceding the show every Thursday night on live.thesecrethub.com, you can find the replay of techwebcast.info where Brad, Jason, and the gang, they, they get a lot of good interviews together with people from Australia and around the world. Uh, most notably of late uh, it was Callie Lewis, and I think this week, that, as you would have just saw, um, uh, some Melbourne, Melbourne geek or someone. So, <laughs> so get some good people on. That's good. Uh, emails, you can, normally you, you, can, you can email Will, or you can still, you can still email, but uh, Will, Eric or myself at uh, Will, Eric or Glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. And uh, if you've got comments to throw, Steve or Frosty, uh, Steve, you want to throw your email out? Um, I haven't got one that I can probably give out publicly, but um, just send me just a message on Twitter. Yeah, or stand at the stand at the Steve at AussieTechHeads.com.au. You'll get it. I'll pass yeah, it on. Yeah, will sort it out. Or send him on the Twitter yeah. if you don't want to go through the middleman. <laughs> <laughs> and Frosty, how about yourself? Have you got a a little email address, or are you just Twitter person as well? Uh, Twitter's probably the best place to get me. That's F-R-O-5-T-Y. All right, good stuff. And speaking of Twitter, mine is uh, Aussie Tech Heads, and Will is Mr. Tomkinson, and Eric is Eric, E-R-I-K, Franco. And you can catch them on the Twitter. You can call in live every Thursday night when the show's on, on Skype. Just punch into the Skype Aussie Tech Head and dial away, punch away. And uh, show notes, they're normally up online before the show goes live, so you can follow along at home in the lounge. And you can join the lounge, of course, every week in the lounge, live.thesecretup.com. Join the chat room, join all the fun and frivolities that go on in there, and have a great time. Sit back, have a beer, all the good stuff. You know what it's all about. That's right. All right, what are we up to this week? Let's, um, let's start off with a story. I've got a story. Let's start with... Uh, there's a guy in uh, North Queensland, I think, somewhere. And he worked for the good guys. And he had a bit of a blue, had a bit of a run-in with one of the office workers who does his pay. So he's gone home. He's gone a bit crazy on Facebook. He's, um, uh, he, he, he writes, wonders how, he, this is what he, he goes, wonders in, this, this is exactly what he's written, wonders how the F work can be so effing useless and mess up my pay again the C's are do, are going down tomorrow, <laughs> so <laughs> fill in the blanks there. But he's but he but he's let loose. It's a it's been a tirade of abuse onto this girl, the office girl. But anyway, 
The uh, Townsville franchise of the, the good guys believed the post constituted a threat to the office worker. And uh, so they, they let him go. They said, you're obviously not happy working with us. We'll accept your resignation. Thank you very much. And uh, so he's, um, he's gone to the, to the Fair Work or wherever, you know, Fair Work Tribunal. And, uh, yeah, and so he lost. He lost. So the day after the comments were posted, the uh, employer told the guy that he, that he, is, t- he is taking that he has resigned. You can't work here. You've made threats against us. And that was the initial crux of the, 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 um, the issue with the work, the fair work, was that he's made threats against the employer. Uh, was about, uh, he said Facebook, he said, so, Mr. so the bloke said, he said his Facebook privacy settings meant only his select group of 70 friends could see his comments, but admitted 11 were co-workers. So someone's obviously blown the whistle. <laughs> someone's lagged him in, yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But I think like it's probably a good idea just to sit back once again and just think when you write something on Facebook, everyone can, most people are going to find out about it if, if it's something like you've, you've blown up or something. So yeah, you've you've got to um, take these things as being public because uh, someone's going to find it and someone's going to say something. So yeah, one of the better uh, better uh, ways of dealing with these things is that I heard I'm not sure who who it was, but someone out there was saying if you don't if you wouldn't say it to your mum, you don't put it on Facebook. So yeah, true. Yeah, so if you if you're happy letting the tirade of swear words go <laughs> into your mum's face, well, fair enough. But do you think like the the other issue here is I think is that uh, if if it's if something's done on your personal page in your personal private time using your personal private equipment is it right that uh, it can be you can be fired from a job because of it uh, I know a lot of people would say no that's not right it was his own personal equipment you know someone one of his friends betrayed his trust or whatever showed you know showed the the office manager or whatever and then that's led to all this kerfuffle. But I guess it would be probably against his terms of employment somehow, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in the fine print. Because uh, I know even from where I work, like, you're not allowed to go out on a Christmas party, make a dick of yourself, otherwise you're in trouble. So I don't go. <laughs> I stay home. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. But, yeah, yes, but I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think work... Yeah, look, I don't know. I don't think you should be able. To, I don't think you should do that. If if it go, if it, found, if it gets found out, yep, bad luck. Too bad, too sad. You shouldn't do it. But anyway, yeah, I um <clears throat> just to interrupt you there, mate. I we got a similar thing at work at the moment. One of the boys are off sick, um, and they're off for about four weeks. And one of the managers has seen a photo of him on Facebook um, at the beach, and there's a bit of sort of. <laughs> Right. Bit of stuff going around about that. And it could be innocent. Could be part of his. Um, he's actually in hospital. You um, know, he's getting some rehabilitation. So it could be part of that, or it could be oh, okay. at the beach. Could could be a number of things. But could be an know, pick. For, Yeah. Well, no. It's a, it's a new pick. It's happened it? in the last few days. So, but w- what do you do about it? You know, like. So he's off on on sick leave. He's off on sick leave, yeah, and um, it's re- rehabilitation for an injury, and there was a pic of him mm. at the beach, so you can read into that what you want, you know, are you sick enough that yeah. you need to be off work if you've been seen at the beach or yeah. what, so. Yeah, look, there's always uh, underlying underlying issues and all this sort of stuff, and I suppose you have to know the whole facts, and that's probably why there's a fair work tribunal, but um, yeah. but yeah, depending on the nature of the injury... But I mean, uh, like, just because you're at home sick, I don't know if that means you can have to be confined to the bedroom. Um, yep. You know, mate, you can, you can, be, like, I could, I'm, like, even say last week, like, I was sick as a dog, but, and I was pretty much confined to the house, but I, I suppose I still could have gone for a drive to the beach, you know, and just, and sat there and just tried yeah, to get some fresh true. air into me and all this sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, sometimes, obviously, the boss gets a bit upset because, how he sees this type of thing. But then again, I don't know. I purposely go out, I don't know about you guys, but I purposely go out of my way not to not to put uh, befriend work friends on Facebook. Yeah, it's, I've been thinking about that a bit lately, um, whether to take my work colleagues off, um, just for the simple fact that it, it blurs the line between work and personal life. Yeah. Um, 
like that story you're saying, it, it could be a number of things. Where do you draw, draw the line as to what's a threat, to what's personal, to what's whatever? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I know I don't do it because one thing does lead to another, and and you're right. Like, and and when I am off crook, I'm sort of pretty much, yeah, just more vigilant than what I do post, just in case it could be construed the wrong way. And so, yeah, you just got to be careful. Just got to be careful. But I think the, the thing with the Google Plus, how you can have your circles or your different circles, well, that's probably a good idea because then what people only see uh, when you post, you post at different circles and the circles don't, the worlds don't collide, supposedly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can exclude workmates. That's right. You, put, you stick yeah. them in a different circle. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, I think we're finished with that. No more comments on that on Facebook. <laughs> I think everyone knows about all that sort of stuff anyway. You don't do it. Facebook will, Facebook will be dead in a couple of years anyway, mate, I reckon. Oh, yeah? Why Why is that? What's taken over? Uh, I just think Twitter and, and Google Plus and that sort of thing are going to... Yeah, Facebook's just dead to me at the moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you're, 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 more, you're increasing... I see Facebook as more um, people just whinging or, you know, <laughs> posting crap, whereas <laughs> Google Plus and Twitter are a lot more... Uh, I've got a lot more interest in the topics that they bring up and, and the way they bring them across okay. rather than just status updates. So, Yeah, well, to, be, to be quite honest, I haven't really uh, dived into Google Plus as much as I probably should have uh, to date. But, uh, yeah, I still, I still do the Facebook thing. I think Facebook's a lot is prevalent, you know, like on all the web pages, you know, where you like this and like that. But just the, the little yeah. Google Plus is starting to become, you know, more popular. Uh, Facebook, yeah, I, I probably still use that as just as a means of communication. Like, I don't particularly sign up for all these causes and all this sort of stuff. I just can't be bothered. Um, you There's know, a like, lot of spam on there. Yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of spam. Uh, you know, like causes. I mean, like not just causes like oh, uh, join us one million members because we hate the colour blue. You know, and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm not into all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. I suppose you know, I use my iPad with that. What is it? The Flipboard app, which is cool. I like that. But I yeah, suppose the thing that, that, yeah, I suppose the thing that bugs me most is that Twitter and Google Plus, you get a lot more. Um, uh, there's a lot more feeds you have access to. If you jump on Facebook once a day, um, you might not get more than sort of a page of new updates but if you jump on twitter you might have bucket loads to sort through so mm. facebook doesn't seem to be moving very quick yeah well over in england if, if you know what i mean yeah well over in england uh that they've they've used facebook they've jailed a man that used facebook to incite right the, the rights over there now this guy apparently this is this is was quite <laughs> astounding when i read this i thought geez like the, the jail sentence this guy got uh this guy jordan from Marnston was jailed for four years on, on last Tuesday, along with another guy that was uh, 22 years of age. Now, yeah, four years, uh, they, were, they were charged and sentenced for inciting public disturbance or something using electronic media or some, some rubbish like that. But um, do you guys, Frosty, what do you think about four years? Is that, is that a bit heavy, a bit light? Um... Well, he didn't try to. Yeah, well, I'll try to a riot. <laughs> well, I'll go out and tell him. Where... I reckon that's pretty fair. Yeah, I, I don't care. Stuff them, stuff them. They've de they've decided to go out there and, uh, yeah, you know, destroy. He what to about make a fool of himself? The people that the, the apparently this particular incident, he's appealing the uh, decision, and his defence is in this particular occasion. He's um, what he incited. No one actually turned up to, or whatever. But it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't believe because there's a lot of other people out there that are in London who have had their livelihoods destroyed. Now these other people, you know, the the, the mental stress and anguish and all this sort of stuff, it's going to be it's going to take people more than four years to probably get over it, um, and sometimes financially. So yeah, no, I reckon four years is quite good. I don't care. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, yeah, Facebook can get you in the trouble on all on all levels. All right, um, what else have we got? Uh, Steve, did you have anything you want to, a story you found through the week? Yeah, I've got a couple of stories. Um, let's have a chat about Google. Um, 
Google this week decided that they're going to buy Motorola. Um, $12.5 billion. So That's from lots. what I, yeah, from all the reading and stuff I've done, the main reason behind this is they're trying to get hold of the patents that Motorola owns to protect themselves from lawsuits from people such as Apple and Microsoft. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's just a big patent buy-up. Pretty much, pretty much. But, Seems um, to be. Yeah, the, the other interesting thing is they also bought these patents off Motorola to protect Motorola from suing other Android manufacturers. Oh, um, I see, right. So, so, yeah, so Google, by owning all these patents, they say, look, you guys can all use this stuff here. We don't, ne we don't need to be fighting amongst ourselves. So it's sort of going to keep things pretty open mm. um, and pretty safe. The other cool thing is that Motorola have a lot of um, uh, set-top box technology out there. So the theory is they're going to work that in to Google TV and try and get that out into the market a lot more. So yes. it should be quite interesting. Yeah, so apparently Google, Google bought the... So it's not actually Motorola, the company that's an offshoot, isn't it? Is it Motorola Mobility or is, or is that yeah, the that's Motorola company? Mobility? So is that an offshoot, mm. or is that the actual company? Does anyone know? It's owned by Motorola, but it's only their, um, like their mobile and set-top box sort of division. Yeah. So they had to complete. split up the company, I think, didn't they? Didn't Motorola yeah, have not, to split up the company here four or five months ago or something? Yeah, not sure. They wanted, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, you mean from uh, via... Um, some antitrust issues and all the anti-competitiveness sort of things. Yeah, I'm not real sure on the details, but yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll so searching. So Google, Google will acquire has acquired Motorola for forty dollars a share uh, in cash now, which is apparently a premium of sixty three percent to the closing price of Motorola Mobility shares uh, on last Friday. Uh, Google also did not confirm that it had agreed to pay a break fee of $2.5 billion if it walked away from the deal. Now, that's pretty heavy. Yeah, definitely. The, um, the thing that they're going to have to prove um, to the fair trading guys is that um, Motorola doesn't have a huge advantage over the rest of the OEMs. Yes. Um, a lot of people sort of worried that Motorola will get preferential treatment because they're owned by Google. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I can't see that happening because if they do that, then they're shooting themselves in the foot, really. Um, yeah. Look, I why, think it, why, why piss the whole lot off just to, mm. just and to sell your own phone? Yeah, and apparently uh, Google's got, well, they've got about $33 million stuffed in the bank. They've just, they spent 12. So they've still got stack loads left, haven't they? Like, it's just astounding how much money they've got there. But they've got to do something. They've got to buy something. People can't expect them just to sit on billions of dollars. And I, th I think it's a good move for them. I think if I was in their shoes, I'd be, I'd be fairly happy. Fairly happy that, that that's happened. I think, yeah, extend their markets more. As Steve said, get into the set-top boxes. And their Google TV is a, bit of a, a little bit of a baby for them. And, uh, yeah, why not? Why not? All right. Now, uh, talking about emails, which Google is, is pretty well known for with their Gmail service, and apparently used to track down this guy, this bomber guy, the fake bomber guy that put the, the, bomber, the fake bomb around that girl's neck in Sydney. Um, so Madeline Pulver was her name. She was at a, in a Sydney home when a man in a multicoloured balaclava carrying an aluminium baseball bat entered her bedroom and told her to sit down and no one needs to get hurt. So apparently he, uh, he was tracked and subsequently caught and arrested in the US uh, through via the use of a Gmail email address. Now, which it comes to another sort of point that I can think of, but I'll just continue with this little bit of a story here first. So the email that he wrote uh, said, uh, uh, the instruction included, yeah, so the instructions that he included on in the note, uh, hang on, what's to say? They, these instructions included emailing a Gmail account in the name of Dirk Struen. It, which also was a fa factional, fictional character from J James Clavell's 1966 novel, Taipan. I don't know, he must have read it. He must have liked that book. 
which would then provide details about transferring a defined sum once you acknowledge and confirm receipt of the message. Police allege the email account was created at the Chicago airport on May 30 this year and travel documents show that Mr Peters, this was the old guy, was at the location on that day. The account was used a further three times on August the 3rd, the day of the bomb hoax, once at the Kincumber Library on the New South Wales Central Coast and twice from the nearby Avica Beach video shop. And apparently there was CCTV footage from the video shop showing the, the old guy walking in. But uh, I thought the reason why I pulled that one out was uh, Gmail. Like, I thought Gmail sort of held on to their little who owns what sort of things. Can, can an email be tracked other than by asking the uh, Google who owns <coughs> it? That is my um, question. Yeah, well, di didn't they catch him because they just basically worked out where he logged in from overseas? Because obviously he put the email address in the ransom letter, then he logged in from overseas to that same account, and then they would have basically got his IP address, seen whereabouts that IP address was, and then but he, they, took it from there. But Google still would have had to have given, him, given the coppers that information, wouldn't they? Oh, the IP address for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, are, are you talking about whether Google are allowed to give out that information? Well, not, they've always been apprehensive, haven't they, about yeah, giving out so. information, and they've always sort of, you know, taken it, taken it up to the challenge of doing all this sort of stuff. Maybe, maybe there's certain issues where they think, well, this is a bad thing to happen. So, yes, we'll do it. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's no way that they could have traced that email back without the help of Google. Really? Oh, no, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think they so They would have either. had to have known where he logged in from, yeah. and the only person that would have known that is probably Google or maybe the ISP, I'm not sure. But Yeah, because I, yeah. I know in Australia, like, the, the coppers can get a hold of anything that they want because if, if everyone reads all their privacy literature, you know, say from a bank or from wherever you may sign up with an account from somewhere, they'll, all, they'll always be in the privacy statement. There'll be something about, that unless uh, we will not give this information to anyone unless it is required by law. So I'd say, yeah. So I'd say that's what the some sort of law, similar sort of law in the US and the FBI has acted under that. Got the information and went and busted this guy. So uh, good, good. Get him off the streets. Yeah, the, the other two things I found funny didn't they? Um, didn't they get his credit card attached to buying a? a ski mask and a, a baseball bat or something. Oh, did they? His own, yeah, I was reading today. I think I think his own personal credit card in his name, uh, he bought the baseball bat and the balaclava days before. So, Well, how can he... he <laughs> he's over there <laughs> proclaiming his innocence. Like, oh, wait, well, you've got to wait till it sort of all unfolds, I know, but oh, it's, a, it's, the, it's a big operation overseas. They're not going to go after someone just on a hunch, are they, I guess? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> pretty funny. I don't know. It's crazy stuff. Uh, he's a lawyer, apparently. Did I? I think I read. Yeah, I read he was quite a, an intellectual guy, but obviously not yeah. <laughs> doing this. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna say not a very smart lawyer if he used a credit card to buy that. Ah, uh, that that's right. It was the baseball bat and the the USB thumb drive from like Office Works or something. So, oh dear, you know, oh dear. Dear, oh dear. Were you going for the five percent match? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he should have known better than that. He should have known better. Um, mm. Yeah, all right. Uh, have you got another one, Steve? Uh, I've got a couple more. Um, this one here is quite interesting. About um, some German guys have worked out a way to transmit data um, over the ordinary LED light bulb. Um, mm. All they basically do is stick a modulator on the light bulb, um, and that will it'll make the light bulb flicker in a certain way. Um, the human eye can't see it, but the receiver that captures the light can actually turn that into data. Wow! So the, the demonstration I saw was quite cool. They actually, um, from the one light source, they could stream four high def movies at once. Um, oh, jeez! Without any sort of stuttering or, or whatnot, so pretty cool stuff. There's actually um, we might put up in the show notes. There's actually a video you can watch where they where they show you this live. So, so yeah. So what sort of light bulb was it? 
just an just an LED light bulb that you can buy off the shelf at Coles or whatnot. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. all, all the modulator does is it, it. I think it alters the. I don't know the exact term, but it, it makes a light bulb flicker in a certain way, and the receiver can determine by how it flickers um, what it, what the data is supposed to be. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Quite, Four high def videos at stuff. once. Yeah. Yeah, that's all so right. So the, the cool thing about it is um, there's a lot of places that um, different radio waves and stuff, they can't be used for safety. Things like um, uh, chemical and, and petrol stations and stuff like that, where um, like your mobile phone or stuff like that might cause sparks. Mm. Um, that's yeah. totally safe. Yeah. Um, airports, things like that, hospitals. So. Yeah, I know there's a lot of things <clears throat> going on at the moment with light and, and the transfer of data and, and things across the light spectrum. So it's um it's interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. But yeah, four high def movies that streaming out of a blink of a light. Jeez. Yeah, out of one light bulb. So it basically turns the light bulb into a um like a wireless adapter. So <laughs> it's get, it's going to be um interesting when they sort of make it mm. to the next step when it's sort of yeah well, so. well i saw a, a show on the tv not too long ago and it was about how they the guys were flashing a light across a distance and the light was getting to the opposite end of the room before it had been lit at the other end like okay. that's it's crazy. You'd have to see the show to understand. But but like so they've obviously they've re, they've received the light before the the light has been visible, like at the originating source. And they and, and they were just talking about how this is you know that they would say now this light beam was travelling backwards in time or something all this sort of stuff. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think that story might be for another show though. But, um, but anyway, Harvey Norman, <laughs> Jerry Harvey's at back again. He's, uh, he's still not happy, but he's uh, said everything in retail at the moment is extremely difficult and the experience is the worst he has seen for years. There is no doubt in the world that in the world in the next six months, many electronic retailers will have to close. It's just a matter of how many uh, actually close. So I guess like when you look at it, you know, you've got Harvey Norman who sells printers and oh, laptops and computers and software and all this sort of stuff. And and probably fair enough that you can buy all this stuff cheaper online. You might have to pay a little bit of postage, but uh, most of the time it's going to be cheaper than going into the bricks and mortar shop. So I think uh, along the same lines as what everyone's been saying to Jerry is you've got to get smarter, Jerry. You've got to work smarter, not harder. Get up with the times. Now, one of those stores that have, has moved on with the times is Country Road. So they're trialling free delivery of online purchases and launching smartphone applications. So Country Road is going to rely on its uh, its store to ensure customers who visit their store will never be turned away if an item is out of stock. In the, cu- in the coming months, Country Road will introduce a product availability locator that will allow I- internet users to make purchases or see them if the item is available in real time. So what you're going you're to be able to do is go into the shop, you ask for a size, whatever, 40, they don't have it, so then they'll order it and post it to you for free. So I think it's um, things like that where they've got they've got it, people these stores have got to move on. Westfield has done something well, not something similar, but they're they're teaming up with Facebook. Shoppers will be alerted to discounts when they use the Facebook Places to check in at Westfield operated shopping centres. Uh, which makes me think, well, what happened to Foursquare? Are they? <laughs> you would so I think Foursquare is gonna they're probably just gonna sit in the background, aren't they? Like this Facebook Places that's gonna take off. Because it's just because it's Facebook, uh, Westfield said it was testing new technology with selected specialty retailers such as Angus and Coote. Don't know why they'd be testing with them in the bookstores. They're they're a dying breed as well. Uh, meanwhile, Commonwealth Bank have teamed up with Facebook to offer discounts, including free movie tickets uh, for selected customers. So you probably have to have a, a billion dollar loan <coughs> or something. Uh, KFC and Seven Eleven have also jumped in, uh, doing check-in deals on the check-in deal bandwagon. So, yeah, so Facebook Places. So, Steve, you're probably not into Facebook Places if you're not into Facebook too much? Oh, no, I, I use it, mate. Don't get me wrong. I use Facebook and I use Places. Um, 
slightly off topic, but it, it just doesn't keep me as informed as what Twitter and um, Google Plus do. Oh, um, yeah. It's more a, more a catch up thing with my friends, really. It doesn't sort of. Mm. It's not my news source like Twitter and Google Plus. So. And, and are you a force? So that's my beef. Are you a force? Yeah, I use. So you're yep, so when you sign Foursquare. in, are you signing into Facebook and Foursquare? I do both. Yep. Like the other day when I was at um, I think it was <coughs> SeaWorld, I signed into both just <laughs> while I was in the queue. So, just oh. waiting, so. <laughs> Well, I'm lucky to sign into one in ten minutes on my stupid phone. And what about you, Frosty? What are you? Are you a, a signer inner for places? Oh, I I have done. I only just signed up for Foursquare the other day because Empire Avenue is oh. now taking it. Oh, is it really? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it is. Oh, I have they're to get using, back into it. <laughs> they've taken that and um, Instagram. So if you're oh, a okay. Instagram account, you can yeah, right. hook them up to Empire Ave. Oh, good stuff. Oh, look, I haven't Ooh. been on Empire Road for a little while. I know I'm still bubbling away, but uh, I might go and have a look pretty soon. But yeah, I'm over fifty. What fifty cents a share or whatever? I'm I'm paying um, was it sixty something cents a div? Oh, you dirty scoundrel! Jeez. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 have, I, have I still have I am I still invested in you? Or have I yeah, just... you got two hundred. I'm oh, fifty good. something dollars a. Yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. Well, don't disappoint me then. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep I'm going. aiming for a hundred. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, well, I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to uh, link up my Foursquare then as well. Um, I've got a little tip for you. Yeah. You buy more shares in smaller amounts. So when you when you buy your shares, buy them in like bunches of ten or twenty instead of just buying one thing. Gives you more actions on the on the site. Oh, okay. Oh, I might have to. I might have to do that. <laughs> oh, I've let it lapse for a minute, for a while, but uh, I know I'm still getting some some good dividends and stuff. But uh, but oh, but just going back with the with the online stuff and and Coles and Woolies and all that sort of stuff. You know, it, the Coles and Woolies they deliver around here now, so you can actually shop online and and get them delivered to your door. And I tell you, it is not expensive. Uh, Five bucks delivery, man. I think it is for um. That's for right. Wood. Yeah, so so that you get the same deal up in up in Tambo. Yeah, yeah, we it's exact same up here. You just um, order online and tell them when you'll be home, and down they come. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at this the other day, and look, I'm not too sure what the prices are if they're a great big difference online or to the store. I couldn't imagine they would be uh, too too significantly different. But for five bucks delivery, like, geez, that's 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 got to start looking attractive, hasn't it? Like, yeah. I I think they are slightly dearer, and I don't think the whole range is on there. But right. for the convenience, like you know. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty sure Coles and Woolies are about five bucks delivery. I think it, it depends where you are. It can range to seventeen, mm. I think it is. But I know from here and it's five. And if you're up in uh, Mount Tambourine, th- there'd be a Woolies and Coles up there, I would imagine. No, there's not. Mm. Um, but I'm pretty sure we've had it before, and it's only about five bucks delivery. Um, if it's anything more than that, it's probably only ten dollars. But yeah. yeah, we we liked it. So yeah, yeah, well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna yeah put the misses on that. I think it's it's probably cost you less in uh, more in petrol to actually go and get it. And yeah. stress every time yeah. I go to the supermarket, <laughs> I want to punch someone. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, what do they call it? The the uh, there's a, there's a term I can't think of the terminology off the top of my head. But impulse shopping, that's what it is. So that probably takes oh, yeah. away a lot of impulse shopping as well. So have you um. Have you seen the Woolworths app that come out this week or last week? No. It's brilliant. It's um, you, when you're talking about Jerry Harvey working, you know, he needs to work smarter, not harder. Mm. Um, Woolworths have nailed that. Their app, not only does it have, like, the online, um, like, shopping basket type setup, um, it's very smart and specific to your local store. So if you... Okay. If you go through and pick out all your items, add it to your basket, when you go to your store, um, it will tell you what um, what items are in each aisle at your local store. Oh, so you'll go to aisle one and it'll go, okay, you need to go down here because you need this, this and this. Oh, wow. um, and if you're at a, a store you're not familiar with that has a different layout, you can punch in that store and it will tell you what aisle certain things are in. Now, is this a, so, what sort of app is this? Is this iOS or Android? It's for iPhone. Yep, right. it's for iPhone. So, 
I don't think it's on Android yet, but it's on iPhone. Now, but it, um, it doesn't have a checkout. You can't actually buy off the app. Is that right? Or you can? I don't know about that side of things. Um, yeah. But it's yeah, it'll be definitely it's, worth a look. Like, so you must be able to, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Because I, I, every, even though I go to this, the same Woolies every week, I still get lost. I still can't find stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, so, it's handy. Like, it's got all the, um, it's got a stack of recipes on there as well. Like a lot of, um, oh, yeah, I think nice. they said a lot of Margaret Fulton's recipes are on there. Oh, and yeah. And you can, you can select a recipe and then tell it what you don't have and it's in your list when you go to the store again. So <laughs> now, now, I don't got know. A, um, I don't a know. weekly catalogue as well. But the cool thing is um, when you swipe your card, like, you know, your loyalty card or whatever it is yeah. when you check out, um, that actually um, takes a snapshot of everything you've bought. Um, right. So on the iPhone app, it will actually tell you, hey, we know you like this type of chocolate. It's actually on special this week. <laughs> so they actually target all the specials to what you what oh, your purchase history is. Kidding. So, Check it out. Yeah. It's really smart. It's really. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a look really, at that after the show. <laughs> it's really designed to um to target how you shop and what you what you've been shopping for. So. Now, also, I don't know if you're if you're that so familiar with the app that you'll be able to answer this next question, but <laughs> if you punch in all these recipes, say say you wanted to cook three Margaret Fulton recipes and a couple of the other ones, do you reckon the app will? Put it into order. So you start at aisle one, and just meander through the aisle. So you just go, you know, pick this off shelf. Pick, 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 pick. So it's yep. all in order. So you don't have to go from one mm. end to the other to the other to the other to the other. Yeah, it's that's just, exactly what it does. Oh. It'll, it'll tell you. Oh, you need, need to go to you need to go to this aisle, this aisle, this aisle, and grab this, this, and this. And it just puts it in order. Um, Oh. Yeah, it just puts it in order. And and as I said, if you go to a store you're not familiar with that has a different layout. You just tell it, hey, I'm at, you know, that particular store, and it yep. will adjust to suit. So. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> I think I need that for our store. I think so. Do, yeah. you know, do you know if you've got the Woolworths delivery down there, Frosty, in Tassie? I would not have a clue. I don't reckon we would, though. Probably yeah. in Hobart, but not where I am. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but you'd probably be able to, we well, would definitely be able to get the app and use some of its functionalities if, if your store wouldn't be listed in the... One of the many. I'm just, oh. about, just about to look for it. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll come back to you then while, yeah. you, while you look. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah. it. That, um, that, just going back to that Jerry Harvey thing again as well, like when I saw that, I just I just spewed, man. That guy's got, for someone that's that big mm. and thinks he's the king of retail, he's got no idea. Like I know, and he's, it, he's still balking at going online properly. Well, have you seen his online store that he's got? He, he has to charge what he does in the store. No, but he doesn't even sell what he what he sells in the store. He um oh, right, he yeah. come out and said, "Hey guys, I'm going to make a, an online deal site," which he did. It's mm. one deal a day or whatnot, but it's it's not what he sells in the store. It's rubbish. It's like cosmetics one day, you know, bottle of wine oh, the next okay. day. It's yeah. just it's it's not it's not the sort of yeah. stuff he does in the store. Look, so. I think I think his problem is that the way. Look, I, I could only speculate, but it, it'd be the way that the, the place is set up. Like each of the store, it's a franchise, so he doesn't actually own each each building, you know, like each <coughs> store. It's franchised out. So if he starts up an online store, the, the franchisees are going to start getting a bit annoyed, aren't they? And I yep. suppose then he can't undercut the pricing on the web page because he's going to upset the franchisee. So he, I, I, he's probably in a bit of a tricky situation. But I think he probably needs to get everyone together, clunk their heads together, and go. Well, let, let's work this out. How are we going to get online? Because um, that was my gripe when he um, when he launched this on Facebook, um, and he said, you know, we're online, Harvey Norman online. I'm thinking, great. But this, even though this isn't what your your franchise stores sell, they're not making any money out of this. It's just you. So yeah, you know, because it's, it's the same like with these franchise stores, like with Harvey Norman Domain and. And probably most of the rest of them, the good guys and all this sort of stuff, you know, they have these sales, oh, cost plus a dollar and all this, all this rubbish. But um, the cost is not actually the cost price from the manufacturer. No. The cost price is the cost that it, it, that the franchisee buys it from Harvey, from Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's the one that buys it from the manufacturer, 
and then sells it to the franchisee. Mm. So, but but even then, having worked in, in retail, that cost price is 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 even more than that. It, it's like a a fixed cost that they associate with that item. So they factor in the salesperson's wages to sell it, um, how much it costs to sit it on the floor, all that sort of stuff. So mm. it's when they say cost plus a dollar, it's yeah, 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 a it's a, a rip. yeah, it, it's a <laughs> it's a normal one of these. Um, yeah, paper cost prices. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so you got to look out for all that. But I, I can I can appreciate it is probably hard. It's maybe not like a David Jones going online. Uh, it probably is a bit more of a, a problem for him. But anyway, you know he's made his money. That's um, things don't last I don't forever. See, <clears throat> I don't see why he can't do it that way. Um, why couldn't he advertise a special online? And if you live at say Narang, mm. you go and pick it up from Narang. Yep. And because it's because it's their stock, they get a they get mm. a certain commission from their head office. It doesn't have to all go straight back to, to yeah. the you know. Or yeah, or if you're gonna buy online, geographically what's the closest Harvey Norman to you and then that store gets the, the kick. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, they've got so, to, he's gotta get his hunch, head honchos together and, and smack them around, get something sorted. But uh, I'd like to know what stores he thinks are going to close, um, apart from his. Um, <laughs> just, you know, JB Hi-Fi, they're massive, and they're going quite well. Mm. Um, well there's, they um, just do think- there's like another one. I looked in the paper the other day, and there's one just down the road from me just opened. And there's one across the road from me, and now there's one down the road from me. I'm thinking, What's that, a, a JB Hi-Fi? Yeah, there's one at the Rabina Town Centre, and then yep. there's one just opened up at the, the Q Centre. In, in, was it Mermaid Waters or something? Mm. Which is right just down the road the other way. <laughs> like, it's, it's messy. See, see, they do, um, they sell online and a lot of stuff I think they do either cheap or, or free delivery. So, but they're not, he, but they're not a franchised, yeah, okay, store either. Like, Harvey's in it, he's in it. I, I can, I can appreciate it, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. He, he's had his time. So, <laughs> that's right. You know, and the other, the other thing he doesn't realize is that. People now are a lot more educated about what they want to buy. Yes. They don't need a salesperson to say, "Here's what this does." They do all their research online, or or they talk to friends, or they talk to people like like us. Yeah. And then they just try and find a decent price for it. So. Yeah. Well, look at look look like look at places like UMart for computer stuff. Exactly. Like, if you exactly guys, right. if you got a UMart store near you guys, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, you you uh, <laughs> shop online. And you get a discount for shopping online. You order it online. You go in. All you do is you punch your num your invoice number into this computer at the front, and then they just bring it out to you. <coughs> they go here you go, and it's there's no there's no flowers or bloody flashing lights or anything like that. It's <laughs> like you just walk into a warehouse and um, you line up and punch your invoice in, and there it is. So no frills, yeah. no frills shopping. No frills. And if you actually want that sales experience, if you want someone to sell to you. It costs more. I think. What is it? Ten percent more or something? Something like that. They, yeah. Yeah. So that's fair enough. But yeah. But it, but it, yeah. To, to get the extra ten percent, I don't know if it's actually worth it <laughs> when you go into the place. It's just the well, way. Quite often when you go to UMart, like whenever I go to UMart, I'll see someone talking to a salesperson, and the salesperson will go, "Okay, that's what you need. Yeah. You can buy it from me, or you can go over to the terminal, punch it punch in, it in, buy it on on our computer, like the online." They've got like an online store in, yep. inside their their building. Yes. Um, buy, buy it there and you get it 10% cheaper. So. Yeah, and, they, and yeah. they are very good prices. They're probably the best prices I've seen. And it's even if you want to get it delivered, you can. You know, like, yep. and it doesn't cost much to get delivered. Like, depends where you are, obviously, and what you're actually getting. Unless you live in Tasmania. Yeah, well, how do you find what it? So <laughs> delivery's pretty bad or well, exy down there, Frosty? Oh, it depends how you ship it. Yeah, if yeah. Um, if some of them that go through AAE are pretty good prices, but yeah. some of them you get that go through Toll, IPEC, or some of the other big companies, and mm. they just charge. They charge like yeah, I, I, when I ordered me two monitors, um, I found one place that was doing ten dollars shipping. <laughs> ten dollars save me. Yeah, save myself about eighty dollars in shipping cost. Yeah, nice, nice. And yep. um, so, so how'd you go with the Woolworth? Did you look up your Woolworth site? Yeah, I did. It says our store's in there. 
and um, it says it's under renovations too. Oh, and is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, good, good. They're in the middle of changing it all from one end to the other. <laughs> oh, right, right. And and does it offer... Just so you have to walk around again. Yeah, yeah. and does it do uh, um, does it do delivery? I uh, couldn't see it in there. Yeah, it might not down there. I, I got a surprise when I only come across it by mistake, actually, that the Coles and Woolies were doing the delivery up here. I knew they did it in major cities. and uh, But, yeah, yeah, for five bucks, why not? So, yeah, so you have a, a few freight issues, yeah, probably not surprisingly, down in good old Tassie. Yeah. How often do you it's get to the mainland? How often, do you come, how often do you get over here to Australia? <laughs> <laughs> um, not that often. <laughs> so, what's the quickest way? Plane, I guess. But what? What? So, how would you normally come by the boat? Uh, no, I I usually go by plane if I have to go over there. Um, probably cost about one hundred and twenty bucks to get to Melbourne. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, two forty yeah. return. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> right. I don't even know how dear it is to go on the Spirit. Is I that, think it's... That, how long does that take? Spirit that, of Tassie. Does that take like, that takes uh, like a day or something, doesn't it? It takes about, about eight hours, I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just drive your car on and... I'll be, I'll be going across there next year. Oh, yeah. So what do you do for eight hours? Yeah. Just what, look at the waves or what do you do? Uh, I think they're only sailing of a night at the moment. Oh, so you sleep in your car. So, <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to, but um, sleep on the deck. Okay, well, so, so you don't get a room on the boat, yep. do you? You can get a room. Okay, right. Um, you can buy, I think you can get like a just a, a seat. You've got seats up there on the deck or whatever it is. Be or you can cold. Sit, <laughs> sit in the bar and drink. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Good work. Yeah, well, hopefully you've got Wi-Fi. They'll be able to do something. No, I don't reckon they do. <laughs> they probably don't. <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve-O, did you have any more other stories? Um, do, 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 let's have a look. Oh, just a small one. Um, we'll have a small one. Firefox. Yeah, Firefox. They're getting rid of their basic... Um, well, they're getting rid of their versions, basically. They're just going to have the one platform, um, give it incremental updates and release those updates as they as they come they're not going to do like version 6 version 5 etc they're just going to keep pushing out updates as they come um trying to keep it a bit like google chrome so right that's interesting so when it so, when you when it me when it says because I, I saw that same business and it says that, yeah they're doing away the version numbers but then it said oh have you got version 6 <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so yeah, they'll still have versions as such. Like if you dig deep down, there'll be version numbers, but they're not going to like say here's version six beta and then release it six months later. Okay. And then release another one six months later. It's going to be incremental updates as they go. Right. Um, there will still be versions, but it's not going to be. It's they're not going to do it like service packs would be released. They're just going to do like straight updates. If that makes sense. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's all right. So Same what, as what they do in Chrome is that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and so there's not many uh, visual differences apparently in Firefox six. It's more behind the scenes. That's what I read. Yeah. Exactly. It's um. It looks pretty much the same. Behaves the same. I think I read one so. of the the most uh, striking difference, visual difference, was the address bars highlighted or something. I've actually loaded one up to have a look but um, apparently that's the biggest visual difference so good on it um, yeah so there we go there we go well boys if we've got no more stories that'll that'll do us for this week well PA's yeah. just said Thunderbolt just went to version 6 so there you go Thunderbird sorry Thunderbird Thunderbird yep. nice yeah yeah. I don't, why do you use Thunderbird PA why, why not just the Gmail or something like that hmm <laughs> Thunderbird's not too bad. I have used that in the past. If Thunderbird's an email client, just like Outlook, I suppose, but it's free uh, from the Mozilla Corporation or Foundation or Project, whatever they would call themselves. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I use Gmail. It's just easy, isn't it? Just easy. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. It's, it's good. It's good. That's it. Yeah. All right, then. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks for joining us, Steve and Frosty. Good to have you boys along. No worries. 
And uh, thanks for no coming problem. up with some stories. And thanks for bringing, um, bearing the cold, Frosty, down in Tasmania. And uh, always, <laughs> you look you look pretty rugged up. So you look like you're pretty warm, anyways. So that's good. <laughs> you have a heater on as well, or you just just with the jacket? Yeah, I do. Oh, geez, it must be cold. <laughs> <laughs> you poor things down there. I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, so we shall be back next week, and hopefully we're going to have the other boys back on deck next week. And uh, I just want to thank, the uh, once again, Steve and Frosty for coming on. So, boys, any time, you're, you're more than welcome. Pick up the mic and uh, come on in. Thanks so, for letting us fill in. No problems at all. All right. So, everyone, that's it. So we'll see you all next week. Until then, bye for now. Ta-da. See ya.